Hey guys, I'm Sam from Tara Huntress, and today I'm going to show you how I restored my great grandfather's record cabinet from the 1960s. Before I touched this thing, it was moved from house to house, was in totally rough shape, and did not play a record in 30 years. But I'm going to show you how I brought it back to life. Spoiler alert, it includes a lot of sanding. Let's get started. This project is sponsored by my friends at Dat Products. So while this isn't the typical project that I usually share on my channel or my website, I have been wanting to restore my great grandpa's record cabinet for a long time. This thing has been moved around from house to house for generations and has not played a record in over 30 years. And frankly, all of the wear and tear from it being moved around from house to house seemed really daunting because I knew that I would have to strip this thing down to bare wood in order to get it back to working and beautiful condition. Now, while the record player itself hasn't spun in about 30 years, the speaker system and the radio system were in really good condition, so my goal with this restoration was to keep everything as close to original as possible. Even cooler, I wanted to be able to involve every single member of my family in this restoration process, so you'll get a chance to kind of see all of them work with me throughout this video. But to get started, I really needed to gauge how damaged the unit was, so I just started by kind of tweaking and playing around with some of the internal mechanics, and as I suspected, the motor ran, but the record player itself would not spin, and my dad insisted that he could fix it, so I didn't order any additional parts for it, which was really helpful because it cost $600 to replace this unit. Okay, here's the deal. The radio works, and but if you switch the switch to phono and then you turn on the record player the motor runs but the record doesn't spin so that's where we are right now so after getting a little frustrated and deciding that i wanted to work on the internal components later i first asked my youngest brother to help me lift up this cabinet and move it into my workshop where i would begin a pretty arduous sanding process I first started by giving the entire piece a really good vacuum and a wipe down and then I started to tape off all of the pieces that I wanted to preserve for later. This included the tweed speaker cabinets as well as the inside of the cabinet which I'll show in a little bit but basically I just wanted to protect anything that was original from any elements or sanding or stain that I'll be applying to this piece later. One helpful tooth that I did keep around was a box cutter and I just used the razor to neaten up all of the tape edges and just cut away anything loose so that when I sand later I can still get a nice even finish. And like I mentioned before, after I was finished taping up the speakers, I just used some plastic and some tape to preserve the inside of the cabinet as well. Now this portion of the cabinet was in really awesome condition and I wanted to keep it that way. So I decided to just tape everything up and I'm not going to open it until I'm done with the rest of the cabinet later because I just wanted to keep it original and beautiful and not mess with anything that was already working and looking good. Once the piece was prepped, it was time to start the sanding process, and I'm pretty sure I tried almost every sanding method in the books. I first started with an orbital sander at about 80 grit, but then realized that was a little too aggressive, and then sanded the piece with 120 grit instead. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this piece was in pretty rough shape. It had a lot of gouges and scratches and stains, and some of the pieces were missing and cracked, so I really didn't have any other option but to sand this thing down all the way to bare wood and then start fresh from there. And really, this took a lot of sanding. Now, for little nooks and crannies that I couldn't fit my orbital sander in, I did have this thing called a micro zip hanging around, and basically it's just a tiny little sponge with Velcro that Velcros some sandpaper to it, so I just used that to get into the little nooks and crannies on all of the edges of the cabinet. At some point though, I did get really impatient and was looking for something more efficient, so I added this contour sander from ArborTech to my right angle grinder, and basically what it does is it has a flexible pad on the bottom that velcros or stickies some sandpaper to it and it's really able to contour to some of the weirder shapes that were on this record player and basically it just did the same exact thing as the hand sanding but did it a lot faster and a little more efficiently my one downfall though was that i did get a little trigger happy and was so excited about using this power tool for the project that i began making some pretty epic mistakes right about here one of the things that I learned pretty quickly in restoring this old record cabinet was that while I thought it was made of solid wood, it actually wasn't. Instead, a lot of the components of this piece were made with plywood with a walnut veneer, which meant that if I sanded too much or too aggressively, I would essentially wipe away the veneer and make these awful, awful marks. So I took a step back, decided to find my patience, and just bounced back and forth between hand sanding and less aggressive power sanding methods for most of the rest of this project. 
At some point though, my other brother came to visit after work and realized that I was having a rough time. So he helped me do some more hand sanding on the piece because at this point, all that was left were some of the delicate parts. And one of the things that we actually ended up doing was cutting some scrap wood that fit into the little grooves, wrapping it up in sandpaper, and then working together to use the sandpaper and this little jig that we made to just get into all the little nooks and crannies in the pieces. And together as a team, we were able to hand sand the rest of the piece down to perfection, working our way gradually through all of the grits until we were able to hand sand the entire piece down to 320 grit. The next morning I came back and did some leftover sanding and then used some plastic wood X to start shaping the legs back to their original shape. There were some massive chunks missing out of these legs, whether they were from dogs or just moving it around. And so I had to work really carefully with a putty knife and sometimes my hands in order to reshape the piece. I used a pretty thick layer and allowed that layer to dry overnight before even attempting to touch it again. One of the coolest parts about this wood putty was because it goes on pink. Once that pink turns into more of a nude color, you know it's dry, so I knew exactly when it was safe to start manipulating and sanding down the legs. I also made sure to use this wood putty on other areas of the cabinet that had some gouges in it as well. Now remember when I said that this cabinet was actually secretly plywood with a walnut veneer and that I got a little too aggressive and made a couple of bald spots? Yeah, so luckily Dap makes a wood putty that comes in different colors and I use a walnut wood putty to start filling in all of these little bald spots and then use my wood putty knife to just flatten it smooth into a little bit of a thick layer that I could stain later. I then just left it alone and allowed everything to dry and then came back with an electric sander and also hand sanding techniques to just sand everything down to the proper shape. Once the entire piece was sanded, I applied some water to raise the grain a little bit and then went back with 320 grit sandpaper to sand down the piece once more. And after sanding, I then decided it was time to stain and I chose a walnut stain at first to begin finishing the piece. Now, spoiler alert, this stain did not work out the way that I wanted to. In fact, I thought that it turned out pretty awful. So after allowing the piece to dry overnight, I then came back the next day and began to lightly sand away the stain that I applied because I just wasn't happy with the way it turned out. Because this piece was in such rough shape, I was looking for something a little richer and deeper. So I decided to go with a gel stain instead. And I basically just applied the gel stain to the piece, allowed it to sit and penetrate for a couple of minutes, and then took a cloth and just wiped away any of the excess stain from the record cabinet. In all honesty, I was totally skeptical that this would work at all, but after seeing the before and after of adding the gel stain, I was super impressed and really, really happy with the way it was turning out. Now, once the gel stain had completely dried, I then added a polyurethane on top that also doubled as a stain just to give it a little more of a richer color. And after two coats of the poly, I then began ripping off all of the tape and I was so excited to see this piece start coming to life right before my eyes. One of the things I really wanted to do was try to restore the hardware on the cabinet and since I couldn't take it off of the cabinet because it was installed so well, I ended up not being able to clean or restore them the way I wanted to. So instead I just decided to tape them off completely and then give them a really light, nice coat of some sort of metallic color. I wasn't sure what I wanted at first, but then I ended up settling for a golden color and I was actually really happy with the way it turned out. Now, in order to prep these because they were in such rough shape, I did have to sand them down first and then I lightly sprayed about two to three coats of the gold color before being happy with the coverage. In all honesty, I was really nervous that the gold color would look super tacky, but after peeling away all of the paper and the tape and seeing it against the chocolate color, I was actually really happy with the way it turned out. Even cooler at this point, it was time to bring the record cabinet back in, so I called in my little brother yet once again. Once the cabinet was back in the house, my mom was so excited about it that she helped me remove the rest of the plastic from the cabinet and then just vacuum and wipe down the inside. And after she helped me with that portion, it was then time to call in my dad who promised me that he would be able to fix this record player because he knows a lot about wiring. All right, Joseph, you're up. What am I doing? You gotta make sure this record player can run. 
Can't run it, doesn't have legs. So, <laughs> hashtag dad jokes. <laughs> After a little bit of troubleshooting, we all moved the cabinet away from the wall and then my dad climbed behind it and started to work on the inside of the cabinet. And what he found was that the bushings inside of the housing were not tight enough, so he just went in there and tightened them up while I played around with some of the controls. Is it spinning? Nope. The motor's going. I hear the motor, but it's not spinning. Moving? No. Nope. It's like literally trying, like... <laughs> After shrieks of celebration, we finally got the record player to work, or at least my dad did, but the one downside was that the original rubber mat for the record player was warped and no longer working, so I just replaced it with a felt mat that I had from an updated record player in my own apartment and then added a record to it and crossed my fingers and hoped that it would work. There really aren't any words to describe the excitement that I felt and the look on my mom's face when this record player started playing a record for the first time in 30 years. It was one of the most amazing feelings of accomplishment that I've had in so long. Now, while I know this is not a perfect restoration and there are a couple of things that I need to fix in the future, like fixing up the drop down mechanism for the record in the player itself, I'm really proud of the work that went into trying to restore my great grandfather's record player to its original condition. I could have easily upgraded all of the components to something more modern and something with Bluetooth, but seeing my mom's face when she was able to hear this record player play some music in its original form was just so rewarding and so worth it. My mom said that if my great grandfather were alive today that he would be so proud of the restoration and I do hope that that's true. While there may not be many restoration projects on my channel in the future, I do hope that you guys will stick around and subscribe for more DIY projects in the future. But in the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching, for helping me make this project come to life, and for always supporting what I do. Until next time, happy DIYing.